Hello, Mount Pleasant area. Today we will be discussing the Fifth Amendment, Rights of the Accused. This amendment encompasses several personal rights, especially to those who are accused of a crime. I have broken down each section of this amendment to help you better understand your rights. Now this is what Mr. Madison wrote. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime, unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces, or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject to the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Let's begin now with section one, uh, which is a grand jury protection clause. The Fifth Amendment requirement that serious federal criminal charges be started by a grand jury, and a grand jury is a group of citizens who hear evidence from a prosecutor about potential crimes, and, and it's rooted in English common law. Uh, it, its basic purpose is to provide a fair method for beginning criminal proceedings against those accused of committing crimes. To avoid giving government unchecked powers, grand juries are selected from the general population and their work conducted in secret. It's not hampered by rigid rules about the type of evidence that can be heard. In fact, grand jurors can act on their own knowledge and are free to start criminal proceedings on any information that they think relevant. It is these broad powers that have led some critics to charge the grand juries are little more than puppets of prosecutors. Grand juries also serve as serve an investigative role because grand juries can compel witnesses to testify in the absence of their lawyers. A significant number of states do not use grand juries. Instead, they begin criminal proceedings using indictments, which are the formal charges outlined by a judge. The right to a grand jury is one of of only a few protection in the Bill of Rights that has not been applied to the states by the 14th Amendment. Grand jury charges are not levied against members of the military, who are instead subject to courts martials in the military justice system. To determine if a soldier will face a military trial or tribunal, one unbiased military officer, known as a Judge Advocate General, or JAG, will decide based on the evidence they are provided. Now, protection against double jeopardy. This portion of the Fifth Amendment protects individuals from being twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, that is, in danger of being punished more than once for the same criminal act. The U.S. Supreme Court has interpreted the double jeopardy clause to protect against a second prosecution for the same offense after acquittal or conviction and against multiple punishments for the same crime. Like other provisions in the Bill of Rights that affect criminal prosecutions, the double jeopardy clause is rooted in the idea that the government should not have unlimited power to prosecute and punish criminal suspects. Rather, the government gets only one chance to make its case. Keep in mind, though, that if new evidence is found, a person can be tried for lesser crime with the new evidence, even if there is a correlation to the last failed attempt. When the DC snipers were tried, and that's their mugshot on the bottom right, rather than putting all of the murder charges together in one basket and linking them as one case, they treated each murder separately in case something went wrong. In fact, I don't believe that the individual states involved had a choice in the prosecution. The government, federal government took complete control. Right against self-incrimination. This provision of the Fifth Amendment is probably the best known of all constitutional rights, as it appears frequently on television and movies. Whether in dramatic courtroom scenes in which someone says, I take the Fifth or I plead the Fifth, or before the police question someone in their custody, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you do say can be... The right protects a person from being forced to reveal to the police, prosecutor, judge, or jury any information that might subject him or her to criminal prosecution. Even if a person is guilty of a crime, the Fifth Amendment demands that the prosecution come up with other evidence to prove their case. If police violate the Fifth Amendment by forcing a suspect to confess, a court may suppress the confession, which means to prohibit it from being used as evidence, used as evidence in a trial. The right to remain silent is all thanks to an Ernesto Miranda, otherwise known as your Miranda rights. Ernesto is pictured on the right, 
He was allegedly coerced into confessing without having legal counsel present. Um, the case was based on circumstantial evidence that Miranda raped and beat an 18-year-old young lady. And the Supreme Court heard this case and determined that Miranda and all those accused of a crime must be told of their rights by police. Furthermore, the Supreme Court stated that subjects waiving their rights had to do so knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. Unfortunately for Ernesto, who would sell his autographed Miranda warning cards for $1.50 to anyone who wanted one, this longtime criminal was no match for a knife in a downtown Phoenix bar. Section 5, Due Process. The right to due process of law has been recognized since 1215, when the Magna Carta was adopted. Historically, the right protected people accused of crimes from being imprisoned without fair procedures, like indictments and trials, where they would have an opportunity to confront their accusers. The right of due process has grown in two directions. It affords individuals a right to fair process, which is known as procedural due process, and a right to enjoy certain fundamental liberties without government interference, which is known as substantive due process. The Fifth Amendment's Due Process Clause applies to the federal government's conduct. In 1868, the adoption of the 14th Amendment, which, which is citizenship, by the way, that's the title, expanded the right of due process to include limits on the actions of state governments. Today, court decisions interpreting the 14th Amendment's due process right generally apply the Fifth Amendment and vice versa. Finally, we come to eminent domain, or what it's better known as the Takings Clause. The Takings Clause over the Fifth Amendment strikes a balance between the rights of private property owners and the rights of government to take that property for a purpose that benefits the public at large. When the government takes private property, it is required to pay just compensation to the property owner for his or her loss. The takings power of the government, sometimes referred to as the part of eminent domain, may be used for a wide range of valid public uses, such as highways and parks. For the most part, when defining just compensation, courts try to reach some approximation of market value. So to sum that up, the government must need the land for public good and pay the owner a fair market value. Have a great day, Mount Pleasant.